Harry has a cocktail. Episode 50. Dun, 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 dun. I've actually been doing this for 50 episodes. A little thing that started while I was on tour with Wicked in 2017, and now it's four years later, and I'm still doing this gosh darn thing. Oh, by the way, did you notice the new intro to the show? How about it? I slaved in front of my computer for that thing for a while, but I've been wanting to bring something a little bit more snazzy. As I was setting everything up today, I was thinking to myself, why has it taken you so long to present this drink? Which is a mint julep. And I was thinking, gosh, you know, I have some really, really strongly weird ambivalent feelings about this drink. Part of it is it feels a little bit intimidating because it's a drink that's been around forever. And at the same time, it's also a drink that's difficult to present because so many people love it, especially people who love the Kentucky Derby because this drink is the official drink of the Kentucky Derby and has been for quite some time. Those of you who love mint juleps, please don't come at me for this, but this is just my opinion and I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm easily swayed about some things. Please convince me about this drink. I'm not sure that I've ever had a really good one. Another reason maybe that I have a little bit of a problem with the mint julep is that it's a Essentially, it's sort of, while it's intimidating on one hand, it also feels kind of very, very um, sort of lowbrow in a way, even though it has very sort of highbrow um, connotations or associations. Because essentially, in some ways, it's just kind of, it's kind of a sweet bourbon slushy. Like, that's what it is. It's not, you know, it's just... I guess every time I've had a mint julep at a restaurant, I've always gotten it and I've gone, okay. It's just never been like one of my ultimately amazingly favorite drinks. However, I purchased some tin julep cups a couple of years ago. I have literally had these for like two years because I have been wanting to do the mint julep episode for quite some time. I just haven't gotten up the nerve to do it. It's very strange. I'm not sure why. I don't know why I'm screaming right now. I tend to scream quite a bit because I'm from Pittsburgh. I don't know if you know, but Pittsburghers have quite a loud, loud way about them. So um, please excuse me if I'm, I'm just excited. I am excited to present the mint julep because I've, I've purchased all sorts of things. I, I bought these tin julep cups, this Lewis ice bag, which comes with a mallet. This is how I'm going to crush the ice that the mint julep is used in. So anyway, I've been really wanting to do this. I just, I, my feelings are just all over the map about it. Without further ado, let me first give you a bit of boozy lore. Boozy lore! Boozy lore! from Robert Simonson's Three Ingredient Cocktail Book because yes, the mint julep is a very simple drink ultimately. But here's a bit of little, here's a bit of lit of lore for you. This is why it's partly intimidating. The mint julep can pretty much lay claim to being America's first great mixed drink. This drink has been around since the mid 1700s. The mint julep is the not quite sole, but staunchest survivor of one of America's oldest drink genres. One that predates the Revolutionary War and very likely, sorry Kentucky, the creation of bourbon. Virginians were compounding julep-like refreshments with brandy as morning eye openers in the mid 1700s. Actually, once upon a time, any spirit would do. A quarter of a millennium later, we have of course long since settled on on bourbon as the requisite spirit. Southern aristocrats, which this drink is associated with, they don't own the mint julep anymore. Pretty much everybody drinks mint juleps. You can get them pretty much anywhere. Gotta say though, they really do love them in the South. Like every time I've been in the South, it's always like right on the menu. In New York City, not so much. I haven't really seen the mint julep up here. I guess it's not really much of a Yankee drink. It's impossible to order a mint julep without a certain air of hauteur. You may not be wearing a white suit or sporting a Van Dyke, but you might as well be. The name of the drink itself is a kind of verbal flourish. Mint julep could be the name of a character in a Tennessee Williams play. Or I'm sure there's a Southern drag queen named Mint Julep. It's a sipper. It even has a straw. That's another reason why I'm a little intimidated and weirded out by this drink because I don't generally enjoy my alcoholic drinks with a straw. Or rather what I mean is I don't enjoy alcoholic drinks that require a straw. Here's an alcoholic milkshake and here's your straw with it. That's just not me, it's not my thing. I would rather like sit and sip it. Don't come at me, I'm working here with the with the requirements of the mint julep and I want to like it. Okay, there's a whole lot of other boozy lore that you can find on the internet, so I'm just gonna move on now and start making the drink. This has been Boozy Lore. Boozy, boozy Lore! lore.
Here is what goes into a mint julep. First, we have bourbon. Rich, simple syrup. Regular simple syrup is a ratio of one to one sugar to water. Rich simple syrup is two to one. So two parts sugar to one part water. So it is more rich, rich, simple. Rich, simple syrup is what we have here. And finally, mint. Smells wonderful, smells very herby. We are also, as I said earlier, we're making it in one of these cups. You need to have the cup. You cannot use one of those red solo cup things for a mint julep. You just can't. So if you're gonna have a mint julep party or serve people some mint juleps, get yourself some mint julep uh, uh, tin things. Bourbon, rich simple syrup, and mint. That's all that goes into it. And of course, ice. Ice is a vital, vital part of the mint julep. It has to be crushed ice. It, there is no such thing as a mint julep on the rocks. It just doesn't exist. So you have to either buy crushed ice or crush your dang ice. Get yourself a way to crush some ice. Here is how you make a mint julep. First, I am going to go ahead and crush my ice. I'm going to do it in my ice bag, but I'm going to do it on the floor because the last time I used this countertop, boy, did it cause quite a ruckus. So I'm going to do it on the floor. So before I go down onto the floor, you'll find that you need quite a bit of ice to fill that cup. So I'm just going to fill this ice bag and make a lot of ice, make a lot of crushed ice. How about that? And now I'm going to the floor. Join me, won't you? Hello, here we are now on the floor and I'm doing it on this nice little carpeting here and I think it won't be as noisy as doing it um, up on the thing, so here we go. Okay, I'm going to put it back in the freezer just so that it stays cold until I have the rest of the makings of my drink. Ice is made and in the freezer. Next, we're going to take about one sprig of mint. Eventually, you're going to need two sprigs with about, I'd say about four or five leaves on it. These sprigs are pretty big. So here we've got the sprig and I'm gonna go ahead and actually just put the whole sprig in there because ultimately, I'm not gonna crush this thing really heavily. I'm just going to muddle it very lightly so that the essence of the mint goes up into the drink. I'm just gonna go ahead and take this whole sprig right here. It has, you know, about four or five leaves. There's probably maybe one too many, I don't know, but it'll be nice and minty and I'm just gonna put it all in there, boink. Then I'm going to take the recipe in the book calls for one bar spoonful of rich, simple syrup. The thing about one bar spoon, one bar spoon, I don't know, just feels really stingy to me, <laughs> but that's probably why they're using the rich. One bar spoon of rich, simple syrup. One! <laughs> And then I'm going to take my muddler and I'm going to lightly muddle just so that sugar and mint kind of gels together a little bit. So there it is in the bottom, mint and sugar. Next, we're going to use two ounces of bourbon. One, two. And I'm just going to give it a nice little gentle stir. That's it. There's not gonna be a lot of crazy running around here today with this. And now here's where you start adding the ice. This is kind of a strange little thing that you do here with, with uh, mint juleps. It's basically a combination of add ice and stir, add ice and stir, add ice and stir, add ice. You want the kind of outside of the glass to start to have like a bit of a cold, icy frost on the outside. Here we go. Stir it, more crushed ice, stir it. Stir it. I'm essentially making a slushy. That's what's going on here. Crazy. And then, it's very messy. I'm going to put a final layer of crushed ice on the top, like so. Then I'm gonna take my sprig of mint. I'm just gonna kind of smack it against my hand just a little bit, just to release the oils. Release the oils! And then I'm just gonna put it right in here for garnish. That way, each time the person puts their face near it, you get a little smell of mint. You see how there's a little bit of ice? There's like a nice frost on the outside of the glass. Doesn't that look nice and cool? And finally, what we're gonna do is, look at this thing. It has a little spoon at the bottom, but it's a straw. It's gotta have a straw. Put it down in. All right, let's try the mint julep. Here we go. Yeah, to me, okay, well, first of all, if you want to stay cool in the summer, you will love this, because I got to tell you what, my fingers are freezing off. But as far as the taste goes, like for me, and just the ice goes everywhere, like for me, I need a little bit more of everything here. There, 
I don't want to sound like I'm massively disappointed in this or anything, but I'm just a little disappointed and it could be because I've made it incorrectly. I don't know. Or maybe that's not the best recipe. I don't know. For me, if I'm going to drink some bourbon, I wouldn't drink it this way. I mean, it's, you know, it's good. I listen, I, I, um, <laughs> look, look, this, this is just all, it's just all falling apart. This fell out. It's so it's not in there. I, I, I just like, I feel like, <laughs> I've got ice falling all over the place. My fingers are freezing off. I mean, this is a kind of a weird episode. I almost never present drinks on this show that I don't like. I want to like the mint julep. I want to, but I kind of don't. Okay, it's growing on me, but it's growing very slowly. Um, I think I was right about it not being enough simple syrup. First of all, uh, I've literally said first of all like seven times, but I just, I feel like there are so many points to be made here and I don't quite know which is the most important point or, or what is the thing that I've done wrong the most with this. What I absolutely love is the idea of a mint julep. It is so hot outside today. It's like 90 degrees outside today. I'm sweating my baduka off. And what I love about it is it's definitely cool. I mean, this feels like this would stay cool for a pretty long time outside. I mean, this being in this glass, I mean, look at that. This is ice. This is a like actual ice is forming on the outside, which is very cool. And my, my mint just keeps falling out. It doesn't want to stay in. I want it to stay in because I have to take a pretty picture at the end to to, to do the, the cover. By the way, there's gonna be a new like picture up here on the YouTube. I made a new episode badge as well. New logo, new episode badge. It's all happening, people. Anyway, there's something about the idea of drinking an alcoholic drink through a straw. It just feels incongruent to me. It's like a thing that shouldn't happen. Now, not always. I don't wanna sound like some kind of highfalutin crazy person or anything, like I'm some kind of stuck up Yahoo. I don't know, if, I, if I'm gonna drink a cocktail, I wanna like sit at a bar or sit in a lounge or even sit outside under a palm tree or something at the beach. But like drinking a drink out of a straw, I don't know, I'd much rather have my face in the ice. But because of the way that the mint julep is set up with all the crushed ice, you can't really get at the drink because there's so much ice in here. The drink is like down at the bottom. So I understand why they want you to use the straw because you can't really get at it. But it just feels cumbersome to me. Please enlighten me on the mint julep. Am I just an idiot? Did I do something wrong? I want to like it. If I were sitting out on a hot night or on a hot porch, this might be a lovely thing, but to be perfectly honest, I'm just the kind of person who, if it's 90 degrees outside, I'm probably just gonna drink some ice water. <laughs> anyway, listen, I don't wanna turn anyone off from a mint julep. I think this is perfectly fine. It's just not my jam. It's not my jam. It's not my fave. Have I said that enough? Have you gotten the idea that it's not my favorite? <laughs> So I'm sorry if this episode has been in any way disappointing for you because I seem to be disappointed. I'm not. I finally made the mint julep episode. Here it is, folks, episode 50. That's it. That's the mint julep. Thanks, as always, for watching Harry Has a Cocktail, and we'll see you back here next time for another 50 episodes. Cheers. <laughs>